it's welcome everybody to our staying in the now hangout with Brian and company um, hello Gordon Sarah Mary Justin <clears throat> Thomas and of course Brian our host for today <laughs> um, so today we figure we would do uh, we will talk about what does it mean to stay in the now um, how do you practice that how each one of us practice that and you know what helps you tips and those kinds of things so we will start with Brian since he's our main speaker for the day and uh, then we'll go take it from there yes give me a couple minutes here just uh, really center myself <clears throat> this is this uh, welcome everyone this is a very this will be very interactive and your uh, if you choose your participation is very welcomed and uh, we'll play off of everybody's question and answers. And the energy that comes through will be nameless at this time. It'll be more of a, of a uh, cooperation of energy. Um, uh, just for my sake, for my sanity, <laughs> It'll just be, uh, it'll just be me, but with a little extra energy from all of you, and whatever wants to come through to the, the highest, the most loving energies to flow through us. <laughs> Greetings. Greetings. Infinite blessings and gratitude and appreciation for your time being with us. Greetings. We love you. Today we shall talk about what it means to truly live in the now, what we would call the moment, why this is so important at this time, and why it plays a role in humanity. The, the now, what does it mean to live in the now? May we ask you a question? Yes. When we say the now, what does it mean? What does the emotion, what does it bring up within you? What does it mean to choose in the now, in the moment? Choosing. It is a, 
Is it to you a memory of the past or an anticipation of the future? Where do you see yourself in the now? Anyone who wishes to answer? Yes. Um, yes, I am um, standing, uh, be in the moment of uh, now for me is I came to realization that um, nothing uh, that has happened in the past uh, for me in my life matters anymore. Uh, nothing that it's going to happen in the so-called future moments, it's not relevant to my existence spiritually, emotionally, physically, mentally, now. Uh, this way, I think that, you know, I came to realization that this way I enjoy, it would allow me to enjoy my moments in my physical body uh, much more, uh, much easier and fluent happening in the moments for me. Anyone else? What does it mean to you to be in the truly, to be in the moment? What do you observe? It's a feeling. You follow the feeling of what you want to do in that moment. And you do it. Whether it's a word to say, something to do, something to pick up, something to jump up and down, to scream, to sing, to dance. Whatever it is you feel like doing in that moment, you do it. You feel it. You allow it to encompass you without worries of what I look like. Without worries of it doesn't seem that it flows with what I have known from my past. Without the worry of but how is this going to affect my future? You just feel and you act in that moment the way you wish to do so. Once you make a choice, when you're making the choice in the moment, do you feel that you make a choice based out of Fear or joy? Sometimes it could be both. But most of the time when you're having the most fun is that of joy. Sometimes it could be a balance in between. I think it's based on awareness. Yes. Why do you feel that the majority of people on this planet, they choose out of fear? Because they believe that's the best choice for them based on that awareness. And it's the only thing they know in understanding of the past. Right. Until they're ready to release it. Do you feel that the majority of people on the planet, they choose out of fear based on the comfort of their past. That's correct, that yes. That repetitiveness, that comfort, that yes. familiar, 
familiarity. Yes. There's a large fear of the non-familiar on this planet. Being a very herd like species, we have a very large fear of not doing the familiar. We want to go with the familiar of the pack. Right. It is because the now moment that you're truly living that moment is unknown. And things that are unknown can be feared because you have nothing to relate it to. And the condition of the planet has taught us to fear the unknown instead of embrace the unknown. Fear yes. the unknown neighbor, fear the unknown territory, fear the unknown consciousness towards a religion or spirituality. That's the opposite. You should be embrace the unknown, embrace this, embrace these. That needs to be the paradigm shift, the structural. Does the fear, it's like a push and pull. The fear is there, but does it truly allow you to be in the moment? Not really. If one changes their idea or the definition of fear to intense feelings of excitement, then we are able to pull ourselves into a more pure neutral now. To me, the now is is the present. Present is a gift. It's a neutral fabric of reality from which to allow our creations, our manifestations to manifest from, if you will, and working from this neutral space, this now moment, we're able to really see and appreciate the full spectrum of beauty and of experience. And when we remain in that now moment, we're able to allow these things to flow through us, to allow us to continue on the most exciting path which is true to our hearts. Down to our spirits, our soul, the joy, our, DNA, our pure joy, our pure bliss of living, of experiencing, allowing. Do you ourselves. feel do you feel inside at times when when you are presented with a choice? Usually the choices that are made, it's in fear of what others feel, what others think. That is one of the things we had to let go in order to reach this point. The expectations of others. The way they may look at you. The way they may react if you do something outside of the norm. Yes, especially when it comes to family and your friends around you. Yeah. It's these uh, what we call attachments. It's, yeah. It's really yeah. the choices we make. We feel that we're attached to something because we wouldn't feel alive if we didn't have those attachments. So we have them for a reason, but yet. When you're truly making a choice in the moment, and you're owning it, you're taking that power. You're not anticipating the future, but you're you're not really relying on the past. You're truly in your joy in the moment. Then you feel at times, ah, mm, but what would mom think? What would dad think? What would my brothers think? What my sister would think? Your friends are around you. That would stop me from choosing out of joy, but it's more out of fear. Yeah. The attachments run deep within families. Yes. This is the hardest thing to overcome at uh, times. Exactly. This is the yes. hardest thing. <laughs> it's one of the hardest on the planet because no one wants to be the black sheep of the family for the most part. Uh, people want to. Mm, no one really truly wants to choose or go first. 
because they want to look around them. They want yes. to see, ah, how did they do it? And did they come out okay? So they mostly choose based on their past because of comfort. Their experiences based in comfort, the familiarity. Not realizing that if they choose freely in the moment, more based out of joy and love, not at the not so much the anticipation, but really truly just letting it flow through you and going in the moment, in spite of fear. There'll always be some type usually of a resistance based on belief systems and structures, but yet if we can get over that, move beyond that, it's a wonderful thing. <laughs> Beautiful. So the One question. More. Go ahead. The question is how to let go of the fear. Right. Hold on. For me, it was a um, long uh, process. Yes. You know, from if you were to asked me this 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I didn't know how to, I, I would not even, I didn't know how to answer this question because I didn't know, you know, I, I didn't even know that I was in fear of, you know, when it comes to making choices. Uh, and I was, you know, making these cho choices out of fear. But, you know, it took me a long time to realize uh, if I stay in the moment and when, when it comes to, um, you know, the challenges coming, you know, they're throwing challenges at me, you know, my family, my friends. Um, now, I'm a little bit better of making um, decisions and, and choices uh, of that that you know I I don't feel I don't feel the fear so much so that I did 10 15 years ago yes yeah, um, very good point I have, yeah. learned, I have learned my lesson so would you say would you say that um that staying in the now helped you get rid of the fear. What 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 do you think helped you um, move along, reduce the fear within you? Uh, what helped me was that when when uh, when I was faced with uh, challenges in my life. Uh, I, it came to the point that I really had to uh, slow down and um, think before I act on those making choices for those challenges and the, the thinking was that it made me to seek some uh, spiritual help. So that got me involved with meditation, um, you know, like um, going to different uh, meditation classes and um, um, spiritual related uh, talks and uh, so I had to uh, literally make the first step myself nobody I don't think you know going back and looking back at you know uh, the, the past I don't even think that anybody could help me or if they wanted to help me if I I was I was stubborn enough not to listen 
So it all came came at me that I had to, uh, you know, uh, to be able to make the first step for uh, moving forward in my life. If if we may intercede here, M yes. Mary, when you chose to take command, how did you feel in that moment? When you didn't have any expectations, you 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 rose to the occasion to make a choice, not so much based in fear, but in command. How did you feel? Well, well because it was a long process at the, at the beginning, I felt miserable. Right, right. I did feel miserable because, uh, you know, as I was going through the process, I, um, I was still, you know, I was uh, fearful of the unknown, and I was still fearful of, am I making the right decision? Right. That what, if, what if I? What if exactly? Yeah. Yes. yes. So, it is not an easy, easy uh, road. <laughs> <laughs> um, although I recommend it for everybody, <laughs> but <laughs> it's not easy at the beginning. You know, it gets easier through the years, but at the beginning, I, I, I was a kind of like, you know. Um, what they say, uh, dark uh, night, star, uh, soul, dark night. Some, they say something is exactly. So I, I, I was at the at the beginning of you know taking this uh, road. Um, and it's for most, it's a practice. Practice choosing freely in the moment. It's putting one foot in front of the other. In it spite is, of you. It is a practice. Yes. It is a practice, and also you're taking this road, and um, uh, it is not a um, uh, easy. It's not an easy, uh, easy driving to this road. You know, you may you may end up, uh, you know, somebody break your windshield. You know, you're driving on this road. Somebody break your windshield or throw a stone on your, you know, under the wheels, and you know, I went through that. Uh, but I'm very thankful that you know I've gone this far, and uh, now now I I like to you know live my life um, in the moment and uh, not be fearful of future or you know what happened in the past. Um, to be honest with you, I don't even you know like my mom called me and she says well. Uh, do you remember like what happened ten years ago? And she described everything in detail, and I say, no, mom, I don't remember. <laughs> or I seriously, I don't, I don't think about the past. And right. the past Why is, do you feel is, is that gone. She you know, I don't, I don't even uh, dwell on that anymore. So. Why do you feel that she asked that question? Because she still. She still carry this huge, let's say, backpack on her back with all these little um, uh, stones, like ripples of stones. You know, she she still carry that, but I don't. You know, I don't carry it anymore, and I'm I'm light. You know, I'm light. I'm I'm very light. So uh, she asked you these questions, feeling that. Mm, it's almost like she pushes your collective buttons, you know. Mm -hmm. She brings that up just to to at least engage with you about the past, something that would bring you down or up to her level. Yes, her vibration. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So she wants to the things of like mind. She's trying to get at your level or bring you down to a level where it's a little more more negative that you're not used to. Because you were telling yourself, "Ah, uh, I'm over that. I need to move on." But then there's still that attachment of mom, mother. Yes. Well, uh, that course. you don't want to offend or hurt mom's feelings, but yet mm, you feel mm, sometimes we have to play the game just to mm, to not cause worry or panic 
to allow mom to have her moment, her time. Yes, that that exactly. But for me, my feeling is that since I live in the moments. The most joyful thing for me now is that I don't even carry any resentment toward anybody from my family, from my friends, relatives. I really don't, and that is that is the most important uh, thing uh, for me is that, or for anybody else, if they don't carry any resentment right. for anything it. happen in the past yes. for anybody. If they remove that resentment from their vibration, then they live in the moment. And you Joyful. see that it's easier to make the decisions and choices for yourself. The it more is. you release and let go of attachments, the easier it, it becomes. It is easier it becomes because it you're not easier. so much worried about the past and you're not anticipating the future as much you're really living in the moment you're taking command you're owning it and saying ah even in spite of a little fear of what mom thinks or anyone else I can choose freely and embrace that yes and as you see there's more joy in your choices there's more joy in your choices because you're taking command. There's always a fear of what others think, but yet you're starting to take command, and you're moving in the moment, and you're not worried about the past because even though it's a comfort, and that's the one thing about the synchronicities, is more you follow your synchronicities, your heart. You're moving in the moment. You're moving into a new realm of understanding. You're moving past judgments, and you're taking command always of yourself. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Getting an idea that as our beingness is the now moment our higher and lower selves as those two pyramids as the points of those two pyramids connect that's where our light is housed and that creates our now moment the that perfect that perfect middle ground where everything comes to it and everything comes from it Yes, and when you, when you expand joy, upon that. And your excitements and your joys. Yes, your excitement and joy, your passions. When you truly in the moment and making those choices to follow that, they, even mm, you look at a, you have a goal. You're looking to set it to a very, you put it way out there in the far future, but yet you haven't accomplished that goal yet. It's just the little steps that will get you there. But the biggest thing is not... Mm, not putting a judgment on how you're going to get there or when you're going to get there. Just know when you're in the flow, you'll get there. You're not, and it's a, more of a synchronicity than anything else. Yes, and that's a big really fun is, part of it. Yes, and that's the fun part because it is a part of the unknown. Mm -hmm. There's no judgment. You're not putting expectations on it. You're going with the flow. Uh, you walk down the street. Uh, the, light, the light turns green. Uh, what do you do? Do you walk across the road not knowing that you can meet the lady on the other side or the man and strike up a conversation that could just be the very person that you were supposed to run into? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you stayed in the past, uh, mm, why should I cross the road? Judging and mm, standing there, contemplating. Mm, should I go this way or that way? Not knowing when or why. But just going with the flow, what feels inside, a synchronicity. And you follow that path. And you meet up with that person. Ah! You might just strike up the conversation. You smile. They smile back. And it could have been the person. And it will be, most likely, the person through synchronicity that you were there to meet. Yes. Would you say that... It's yes. important to go with the benevolent flow 
and not just a flow, because the flow can sometimes be a negative flow. True. The negativeness usually comes back from a reminder of the past. Mm-hmm. But if you but if you're in a constant repetition of say you know ninety percent of the time people are having the same uh, redundant thoughts in our country there's been studies and if they continue to go with this vicious cycling of flow like yes. that's it's continue to think in a negative um, distortion until they change that flow to a benevolent flow of loving if it's even towards service to self truly you understand service to self is service towards others because it's a reflection of self. So it's a flow that has to be not at the expense of others, but a flow that is all-encompassing oneself and others, a holistic flow. Mm. It's always a flow. The judgments come in, and that's where the, mm, if this is right, could have done it this way or that way, how I'm going to get there. You're right. It, it's still a flow. Mm. And yet, to make it more mm, enjoyable, it always also depends on how your belief systems, your structures, but yet... Moving in, even in spite of fear, just making it easier to choose freely in the moment. There's always going to be something that nags at you, like mm, contemplation. Mm, should I do it this way or that way? But once you start to get out of the mind and more into the joy of it, the heart, things just start to really flow to you. You see? It becomes easier. Choosing in the moment, freely, with no expectations, no attachments, no judgments, just truly taking command and saying, I exist, I am. And really embracing that and feeling it. Not just giving lip service to it, but really feeling it. That's power. What are some affirmations and or exercises we could do to help dissolve expectations. One that I use is repeating that trust and faith. Trust, faith, and hope are all dissolved by unconditional prime creator source love. Um, are there yeah. some other suggestions or any other exercises and or affirmations that could help us with dissolving expectations and and allowing ourselves to trust in our in our flow and getting into that harm harmonized dance with with our flow as we mentioned once before and from other channels it is the mirror exercise truly embracing self-love of yourself mm. is having the love of self looking in the mirror with no judgment for a good mm, 10 to 15 minutes. And why you observe every part of you, some would suggest to look in the mirror naked. And really without judgment, can you look at yourself and say, ah, I love you. I embrace you. You mean the world to me. You exist. I'm alive. And truly feel it. Not just look, but feel it. What you're doing over and over, doing this daily, you're starting to build the self-confidence of who you are and remembering that you are a spark of the divine. God got us all in this. It is really a reflection of you. You're looking in the mirror. You see your aspects of yourself. But don't judge. Don't rush to judge. That's the past. Embrace the moment. Truly honor, honor your divinity. It truly is an honor to work among all of you, to be with you. Embrace that, the feeling. Could you give us your definition of honor? Honor is a reflection of the magnificence, the brilliance of allowing yourself to choose freely in the moment. Could you also say that it's respect with love? 
Yes, it is love at the forefront, the self-love, the reflection, the honoring of the self is the love. It's the acceptance of who you are. Love is acceptance. <clears throat> so would you also say that by loving yourself, you're more able to stay in the moment, the more yeah. you love yourself? Yes. And you'll see the judgments fall away of what, what was in the past. The anticipations that come up to you usually are based in the past. Ah, uh, this I tried this before, but it didn't work out this way. That's the anticipation. That's the judgments. Let it go. Allow the synchronicity to flow through you. Allow it to just to come to you, but still make an effort to put one foot in front of the other. Because truly where you want to go, you will get there. That depends on you. How fast, how soon. Allow it to flow without no expectations. But it comes back to love. Yes, always. Always. I think it's tricky with the conditioning of our society with loving oneself, um, especially in the Western society, because there is this uh, sense of due to the way you present yourself to others and the way you present your sense of how you love yourself, uh, either through the reflection of others seeing that uh, in some way of jealousy of wanting that for themselves, or for you doing it in a way that might, without knowing fully, be infringing on others. Um, there's all, there's this fine line we have to walk where, where it's not to be looked on as a sense of hubris, or as we call cockiness, where it's it's loving oneself but doing it in a way that honors others too, respects others at the same time, um, which is this interesting uh, cultural. Uh, thought process that we've created, but it is a very real fear for people, some people, and I know for myself, some people who deal with this sense of vanity and not trying to be vain to others, but um, showing you love yourself, but, but it's like, oh, well, that guy is just, you know, he's full it's of... It's almost like a cockiness, a self-centeredness. Yeah. But you're not. Yeah. But it's not. It's walking it's that just, fine line. Yes, it's, what we would say, a little anxiety, but it's more confidence. It's confidence. See it as confidence and oneself, and how you portray yourself to the rest of the world. It's yeah. confidence. Yeah. It's, that's, Those that's that mind. judge around you, you still feel the pull, the push and pull, but still it's a part of their, based in past fears. Oh, who does she think she is? Who does he think he is? Better than me? That's based in fear of the past. Yeah. Now we've created this new paradigm to deal with that, where the cool thing to say is, oh, that's what uh, they think, you know, haters are going to hate. They make up these funny little lines to help you deal with that fear, but as a society, that's what we started evolving, saying it's okay to love oneself and don't take the judgment of others personally, because that's something that they're having to have their own karmic release of, and it's, it's you're just a mirror that you, you know, but part of my life growing up, I've learned that you have to not take it personally for truly loving yourself because, you know, um, right. your kids are getting te teased or something, they deal with this. Don't take it personal, you know, don't let the words really affect you, but it's still very real, it's very direct. So it's how do I transmute that at such a young age with only such very limited awareness when something so direct and something so mean on the playground or whatever, how do I transmute that to a sense of love when the society around me, it's not totally bent on, um, it's still very working, working on giving the youth the sense of holistic thinking and, and not thinking they're separate or they're, they're alone if they're, you know, it's, if, if you get bullied, you fight back or you try to, you know, defend yourself, this kind of the main thing, you know, it's, it's uh, still a very fight or flight uh, environment in a lot of ways on the playground. And that early on belief system or conditioning can have, as we know, a very real effect as you get older and older to where it still resonates and you still have that sense of, you know, I it's easier for me just to submit in a scenario when I should be confident in myself and in my empowerment. Say, no, you're infringing my free will. I, I deserve to stand up and speak. So, uh, 
just giving you, I guess, a sense of the cultural background of a lot of things that these conditionings come from and these systems come from. It can be very silly, but it can be very real. Um, and I know it's something that I've transmitted and resonated with. Say, wow, that really affected me, but it was such a minor thing, but it really had a major uh, ripple effect in the consciousness. Yes, it's like an eye for an eye. It's an eye for an eye, in a way. It's, ah, it's, oh, they took something from me. I feel vulnerable. I need to lash out. I need to get even. But why? What does it truly resolve? Does it push you, those more in fear? Does it push them to be able to choose freely in the moment? What is it, what holds them back from expressing themselves? Why do they feel that they have to express themselves based in mm, hitting back? What is the fear? Where is the fear? What do they feel they're going to lose? If they don't hit back, and it might not even that, yes. What well, what I found it might not even be a fear. It might be an attraction to chaos. You know, it's, it's enjoyment. It's, the enjoyment yeah. of teasing. And that, yeah, mm -hmm. and that's not always something that's wrong that I've learned to understand. Is okay, you enjoy chaos a little more, um, but just enjoy your chaos in a controlled way over here. And I, I've learned to just view it in a perspective that's healthy for myself. Say, hmm, that's an interesting experience. Or you know, I've tried it out a little. You know, being chaos side, but I've learned that. You can have order to chaos and bring harmony to it, but and still have allowance of it. You know, I'm learning that it's um, truly all about, as we know, more and more balance. So there's going to be a little chaos in this universe. It's important. It creates yes. creativity. Every, it creates, you know, everything, everything that you, everything that you feel inside, you're projecting outward in some way, shape, or form. So in a way, you attracted that chaos. It's a little bit of teasing you. Why the tease? Ah, maybe they're there to reflect something within yourself that you haven't looked at or don't choose to look at in the moment. You see? There's something there. Ah, why did that person come up and hit me all of a sudden? For no reason at all, it seems like. Maybe I didn't love myself today. Maybe I choose to be vulnerable in a way that, hmm, they just come up randomly and they hit me. Why? What caused that? What is it I'm not giving to myself? Why am I so hard on myself? Did I truly attract that in the moment? Perhaps. You see? Sometimes when people choose to tease each other, they're truly trying to bring out the best in you. Um, some of the behavior of kids here the number one thing for a young male to do is to hit or tease the young female to gain attention, and then that's his way of showing he likes her. You know, it's yes. It's, it's not. It's just perspective. I understand that perspective, but the intent is of an, a loving nature. And oh, sometimes I saw the intent of these people because some of these people became my best friends. The kids who you know bullied me when I was very young or something. You know, and I, I realized their intent at that time was really a cry out for attention. Of you know, hey. I'm not getting enough attention at home, and I want some friendship or whatever. You know, I'm just, you know, it was just a cry out for. I realized them wanting love in some way, and uh, eventually, as they got older and we talked, and you know, we, you know, <laughs> a vulnerable moment. He'd be like, "Yeah, man, I was sorry. I was that way to you. I was just trying to fit with the other guys and and be one of the pack, and uh, you were an easy target. You know, and you know, all these simple things, but he said, you know, it was in a, out of real, they all felt bad, truly, after they'd go home and be like, oh, I felt guilty about it. Then, like, Getting the shame, yes, yes. Yeah, and so that's what was their karma from it, and for me, it was, you know, my own direct experiencing of just, okay, well, I don't know where it's coming from, but it allowed for introspection and soul growth on a different level. So yes. I think yes. there's always something to be gained from both parties. Just because you only don't only see your perception and your perspective doesn't mean they're not gaining something. And that's something a lot of people discount living in the world and condition we have to only think about your reality, your direct experience, only you. You know, death and taxes, that's the most important things. And it's more of holistic. Don't only think about your perspective. Think about that perspective of that person you just had an experience with. You know, all these other perspectives. You know, truly it's the whole planet and, you know, well, let's just start there before we get, you know, universal. But that's where we have to move Where The perspective has to be counting everyone's perspective. That it, it affects. That's um, where the appreciation comes in. Truly honoring, the, seeing the God within each other. Yeah. 
really, yeah. truly seeing the God within each other. And then you start to see, ah, mm, I didn't have to be mean to that person to get their attention. There could have been other ways around that. But yet they chose that in the moment because it was a self-reflection to you, to us. It's like, mm, you're being very playful. You're being very teasing in a way to the other perspective the the other person they don't see it as that they see it as a lashing out um, an aggression but yet they're learning something from it they're gaining a different perspective that maybe it takes time for them to understand yeah but it always goes back to the self yes yes and they might grow to appreciate it yes realizing in the future that ah, I didn't have to do that I'm sorry yeah. I'm sorry. But yet, the greatest wisdom is then is to realize that uh, no hard feelings. Give them a hug, a kiss, a handshake to say, ah, I see the God within you. I see that you were lashing out based on a bit of fear of something else. It might have not have been mine at the time, but yet I lashed out at you. I'm sorry. So... <clears throat> so... So, it's really about the pain that the other person is feeling. Um, I don't know that it's a tension. To me, it feels more like there is pain within, and it needs to manifest itself in some kind of way. Because based on in past beliefs, that is the only way do you believe for you to express that pain, right. to allow it to come out. <clears throat> Ryan, because, you know, let's talk, you know, in terms of the bullying, um, they must be feeling, they must not feel powerful in their own lives. They feel very vulnerable. So, by doing that, they feel they have some power somewhere. Um, the person bullying or the person who is receiving? The person bullying, um, they feel powerful when they're doing that, but that's due to the pain that they're feeling within. Yes, there's a pain inside of even them. Even the bully, in some way, is lashing out based on fear. Fear right. of something within themselves, yes. Yes. Isn't that an illusion they're buying into then? Just saying this is an illusion of power that... You know, I yes. think that's people get to the extreme, people get to this extreme polarity of okay, I've got all the power, I've got all the money, I've got all the status. Oh wait, I'm still extremely miserable. Oh wait, I still don't really love myself. All this power I thought that would fill that gap of lacking of love or you know whatever we're speaking to, it's an illusion they're buying into because they're not as we're speaking to really assessing. Truly, the person who is the bully, the one that's lashing now, they they're lacking something or they don't see themselves in their brilliance. It's, it comes back to that self-love, appreciation for themselves. And that's There's an illusion that they bought into illusion. somebody else. Yeah. Because yes. somebody, that's something that they had to think because somebody told them that or they thought that about I don't think you would think that about yourself right away. Ah, I think for, that me, for me to love you, for me to love you, you have to do this, this, and this. Yeah, it's judgment from parents or something, you know. Yeah, but at the moment, at the at the time that they do bullying, they don't they don't realize that it's uh, illusion, power, power of. Uh, oh no, that's exactly yeah. Well, they have a very high confidence in thinking it's. While they're doing it. Yeah. I I think they have hesitations when they see their actions, when they see how the effect they have, and they say, "Oh wait, maybe this isn't the the best means because it's hurting others." You know, that's when they have that illusion brought more clarity to it, and the, the illusion becomes more clear, and they see exactly for what it is. False something, evidence. Of something has to happen to them, so they realize either another challenge in their life or something. So they yeah. really realize that this is an illusion. You know, the power is is not a real power; it's illusion. Something, something must happen to them. Yeah. So and I don't well, know if it, is there is there. <coughs> A uh, way of, like they say, cause and effect. Something, must, you know, something happens must happen to them to realize that. To for them to realize. And it will. 
hopefully in this incarnation for certain ones. But as a human, as a human uh, species, it's so unfortunate that you know we have to go through this process. We chose uh, this. Always remember that we chose this because it is extremely beneficial for soul growth. This is an incredibly awesome playground to learn lessons. We, we learn it so exponentially well here compared to other places that are more saturated, where it's always connected to benevolence and all that is. It's always mm -hmm. blissful, of course, but you don't have the opportunity for such an extreme amount of soul growth. Right now, mm -hmm. there's extremely high demand for planet Earth because it's at a precipice for uh, ascension and it's at the um, new birthing of an extremely beautiful dawning of golden age, an age of enlightenment, an age of holistic social memory complex mm -hmm. uh, coming together. Yeah, process of awakening for, for us human beings to a higher vibration, going through all these emotional roller coasters. Emotions are truly what makes us most unique that I've learned to value more and more. Human beings, we have, I think, the most complex emotional archetypes in the universe. And I might be wrong there, but we have some of the highest amounts. It's more like 22 archetypes or something, you know. We've created new emotional archetypes for the universe, sarcasm and these things that certain entities come here and they don't even know, they think of everything literally, they don't even know what we're speaking of in certain personality mm -hmm. we've created. So that's an extreme gift that we have looked as a hindrance for so long, but our emotions are truly are going to want to make, are going to want to make us so, have made us so cosmopolitan on a universal level. We've gained so mm -hmm. many perspectives as the explorer race to now say, oh my god, we can now utilize all these emotions to have such a depth of experience and, and, and embodiment to show others of you can, you know, emotionally do it this way and this way and all these different, you know, infinite amount of expression, whether it's dancing, singing, or all these things, you know. That is such an extremely huge, beautiful gift we've given to the universe. That, 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 that just lie awesome. there alone. Look at the brilliance in that. Look at your own divinity in that. Yeah. Look at the, the great responsibility that you may feel upon yourself. But it's truly that self-love of, wow, what a gift to come here to forget who you are, to come to a planet, to live on the surface and to really have the amnesia of spirit in a way sense, sense that you forget who you are. But yet you start to build your way back up. You start to remember the dreams, the visions, the, the connections to source and to other extraterrestrials, to your soul families and your loved ones on the other side. You, you start to feel that it's really, it's about unity. Connectivity. It's about unity. We and created sharing, and, and the, the densities create the separations in the way that it's still beneficial to all choosing the moment, but yet you feel the separation. Ah, I want to get off this planet some days. Why should I stay? So much hell on earth. It's a struggle here. It, learning to allow to appreciate the self, starting to practice more and more, and choosing in the moment. Choose, choose, choose. And moving yourself into practicing that, to taking more command of yourself and of your soul essence of you. Of, your spirit is you. And you're, you're, you're commanding yourself, but yet you're taking responsibility, integrity for yourself, your actions. And then the appreciation starts to build, the confidence builds. And then those who, what you call, call you one day and say, ah, I had this, this, and this happened to me. Ah, you can stand as the master, the mastery that you are and say, ah, hmm, I understand. You don't have to feed their energy. You don't have to feed them in a way that takes from them. You don't have to push and pull against them. You allow them their say-so. You allow them their freedom to choose freely in the moment, yet something that might stir within you. It always comes back to self, the love, the appreciation. We're creating a new poem back to source. Yes. And we're teaching other, what you call extraterrestrials, and others, the, the range of motion that we have on the planet. Yes, you're right. It, it's a gift, an honor. 
we're light showers. Be able to be as observers and be observed at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I, mm -hmm. I'm excited. I'm excited to take on that role more. That we the more, the more awareness we have of recognizing that, that we are truly taking on a, a, a we are masters, we are explorers, we are the way showers, we are the pioneers for a new path back to source and truly our purpose on Earth is to merging with Gaia, become a and collective the, to and show the key, that. Yes, and the key to remember also is that to harmonize with each other, not to try to tear each other down and pull things apart, truly to learn to harmonize with each other because what's happening is as you see the differences, the differences will start to fade away. And it's not so much a difference of negativity. You're, you're allowing that to go at the wayside. You're really learning to be harmonious in a way that all can benefit. It's a win-win. It's more of a unity. Win, 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 win. Yes, yes. Integrate. It integrates everything. It, it sure does. It sure does. Um, a friend of mine, uh, her son uh, commits suicide, take his own life a year ago. So, but he is part of our, his essence, you know, is part of God, of course, but he is part of our, part of us as a human being. Yeah, so, what, what do we do in this situation? You know, it, how do we, how does he uh, sit in this category as a human being? That, what, 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 where is he? What, what can we do for him? He is part of our species. The being that took his life. Is this the one we're speaking of? The one that took his life freely? Yes. We might not know all the ins and outs of why he chose that, but he did cho choose it. The one is to recognize it. Even if a baby comes to the planet and mm, somehow something happens, stillborn, or mm, someone early at an earlier age, but whatever the reason is, and they take their life somehow, or they go when it, you feel that it's not their time, but yet that's still an attachment. Still allow them to to honor them that they chose that at some way, at some level. We may not understand all the ins and outs of the choosing, but yet they chose it for a reason. Maybe to bring family members together more, in spite of their death. Maybe it was to bring others that haven't seen each other for a long time together at the funeral. But there's something, a synchronicity, a synchronicity. Even though on our side it's there, on what you call the earth side, it, it seems like uh, uh, they took them, they took their, their own life. It, it, why, 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 why? But at another level, a greater universal point of view is that it serves a purpose in their choosing freely. They chose it. The other thing is, can we allow that and accept it? That's the hardest thing on the planet. Can we accept others' choices? What the choice they made in spite of fear. They took their own life. They gave up on their life because of some type of fear. Well, my question is more like, uh, so if we are as human beings um, ascending and uh, he is part of us, so what is, does, is the awareness. It's just be more aware of your... Don't we have to, don't we have as a human beings, as a species, don't we have to um, uh, raise the level of our vibration on this earth uh, so we all 
a hand, not not uh, a group of us who are awakened, but uh, eventually, you know, all of us as a human being um, take this, you know, ascension road uh, to a higher level. Uh, and since he's part of us, so yes. my question is, how does that work? Your ascension is truly your awareness of how you see yourself as a singularity and this around you, and also as a soul essence moving into a collective. You see yourself as a singularity, and you also see yourself as a part of a collective. It is yes. truly your raising your vibration, or it's what we call, what you call ascending is really you being in the moment and choosing freely. That's how you raise your vibration, is letting go of the attachments, the fears, the doubts, the worries. Leave it up to synchronicity. Flow with it. The more you play with it, the more you're in that moment, your vibration starts to rise and rise because you're doing it with joy. Love itself is a very high vibration. So you're allowing yourself, when you feel that love, you're feeling good inside. It's very uplifting. The languages that we share, it is very uplifting. Music, very uplifting. Find the things that truly, for the most part, bring you joy. And when you choose, move into more that which brings you joy. May I add something? Yes. And this is speaking to uh, Mary's question. The person who chose to take his own life, that person came to a point that he was so low in energy that he couldn't see a way out in this human form. And the only way out for that person the, one, the only way to reach that joy again was to take his own life. Yes. That was a choice that person met, made for itself, him or her, whichever one it is. Mm -hmm. And in that way, they have achieved an ascension of joy and perspective. Understand that something was learned in the taking of its own life. Something was understood that could not be understood here on this plane of existence. Whether we understood what the choice was, that is not up to us because that is not our choice. Very good. It is that being's choice. Yes, their ownership of them. Their yes, that was the only way they could take command of their own life. So would you say by, uh, by... May I say something here? Yeah, go ahead. Um, Mary, when, when you're asking about him and us, are you asking in what sense can we help him and help ourselves? I'm exactly. trying to understand. Okay. Yes, I'm not. I'm not questioning his choice. Okay. Yeah, I'm that's what I thought. Questioning. I'm so, not questioning that because I yeah. because I know he was miserable. <laughs> right. So but, the question is, the question is how we as human beings as a society can help each other better? How can yeah, we yeah. be more aware of each other's feelings? So we because can collectively ascend, all of us. Well, by well, helping thing, ourselves with love and ascension, we help the others. We help right. the collective. Right. Right. So but say, but by the same token, what did you say? Well, then I'll finish. Yes. 
say by re by uh, letting go of the attachment of there you go why he did that why why that was his choice why he was miserable he could strictly take other other ways of you know staying here and and deal with it by removing these attachments um, would you say that this is the way we're helping with our vibration, raise our vibration, and also at the same time, him, his vibration to rise up to the ascension process by letting go of all these attachments and... Um, well, I'll tell you... Wait, can you let me finish first? Yes, go ahead. And then you can go. Um, I'll tell you from my perspective, I think, yes, raising our vibration is important um, because then we're, the, the higher it is, um, the easier it is to help each other and the easier it is to help others. Um, but I think as, as a society, we need to learn to extend our hands to others. And I think that's part of what that teaches us. Um, that I think if if along the way we learn to be there for each other when things are not bad, things won't get that bad. To the point where somebody feels they need to do that. Do you see what I'm saying? So that, excellent. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So so I think that. For us as, as humanity, that's what that's teaching us. Because um, a lot of times um, we don't want to hear it. We don't want to hear it. And it's not about going into that other person's vibration, but it's about you listen, you stay where you are, and you help pull them out. Yes, before tragedy happens. Before yes. tragedy. And as a collective, we have to learn to honor free will and choice, and we have to honor to learn to honor each other's perspectives. Always, if they choose that, that's their choice. If it's not at the expense of others, it's all about honoring free will and honoring balance. We need to bring balance to this planet. Through balance, that involves honoring every single person's perspective and free will, and Saying, honoring their feelings. Uh, See, you have yeah. to. We have to honor each other's feelings, which I think a lot of times that's overlooked. Yes, it's we, overlooked. We jump in and and we say, ah, but I know what's best for you, especially our mothers, our fathers. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've done it this way all my life. You should yes. follow my steps. You see? Yes. It's going beyond the belief. It's it's really taking command and honoring the God within each other and choosing yes freely always respecting each other's emotions yes yeah this is why giving love so freely is so important and not expecting anything in return yes that many of us greatest. many of us it took a long time to understand what love is to be able to freely give love and receive in return to get it from our families, our friends, and even from ourselves. There are times where it's so hard to even say the word love for many people because they've never seen it. We are here to freely give love. We have decided to go through our hardships, to learn how to love, and to give love. That is the key that is missing. That is the key that will change everything. No matter what a person goes through, no matter what a person does, to love them anyway. It's the truth 
of your being. Love without conditions. Yes. There you go. Well said. Well said. See how it's easier to love another when there's no attachments, there's no control, and there's no judgment. It's easier to love another. Yes. And in some ideas, you can never ever not love others in a sense. Everything is love. All the idea, whatever you can do to a person, is love. Um, being that you don't have to worry about you're not loving anybody else because you are always loving your own way, always. And you you don't have to be stressed about you're not doing enough for a planet, for people. You are basically a shiny being you are. And without you, existence wouldn't exist. That's why you are so important, people. Otherwise, you wouldn't exist. And if you are here to hurt someone, in some senses you actually are loving in them by hurting people. Because love is everything. Everything is love. That statement alone that you spoke of, I exist, is so profound. It's I exist, period. It's so profound. Just feeling that and knowing that. You're alive. You're here for purpose. You're here for reason. You exist. Choosing this at some spirit level, but yet you're here. Enjoy it while you're human. Enjoy it while you're still on this planet. Because can you believe, my friends, much after this lifetime and beyond, you may choose to go to another planet. It may be entirely different. But enjoy at least while you can, while you choose to, to be human. And enjoy the sensations of the senses, the smell, the touch the hearing, the seeing. Take it in. Breathe it in. That's the most thing we can also recommend is breath. Breathing it in. What it feels to be human. So make me good <laughs> <laughs> I don't think uh, negativity can be eliminated. Uh, Naturalists think that it, it can. But uh, basically, I don't, I don't think that it can be eliminated. Basically, basically, you exist. You are p a part of existence and what exists is you, you are everything. So that includes that you are negativity because that's something that exists. And you are positivity, you are everything in a sense. It's all part of who you are. It's finding the balance in between yes. for yourself. Well, the reason I say because uh, now I know that even in other star systems uh, there is there is war, you know, between um, negative and positive and benevolent and um, um, not so benevolent uh, uh, species. Uh, even even highly evolved uh, star systems. Uh, they they have um, quarrel and arguments 
and wars between them. So, uh, I mean, I don't know. So far, I don't think that you can, I mean, this is my belief, that I don't think you can get rid of negativity. You see, here's the thing to understand. Negativity is a perspective. Even those whether you call them nations, whether you call them star systems, whether you call them planets, even though you may perceive them as being negative, in their eyes they may be doing something positive. So this is all about perception, really, in perspective. One species may be doing something for their survival. You and because it's infringing on your species, you think it's negative and you want to fight back. And so both areas become what is in perception a negative idea. Look, look, okay. up, look at this world this way. Look at if the world is the internet in a sense. You choose what web page you want to go to, what web page you want to look at. If you choose to go to a positive website, you still know that there are web pages on the internet that are, are negative and you cannot really do anything about them because something that exists always exists. If you know it exists, you can never change it or remove it. So you can never really get rid of something from existence. Because if you could get rid of something from existence, it wouldn't exist. So the reason being it exists is to exist. It's important for the idea of negativity to exist. You can never change that, but you can change, in a sense, how you look at things and the world you want to live in. You don't have to connect to the negative world, have that to be part. Allow those beings who are negative to experience the world as negativity. Or you can choose to get involved with them. That's all all up to you. Beautiful. Something that pushes your collective buttons. Something that pushes you, you feel that's negative coming at you. Or a belief that says, ah, I'm not worthy enough to receive. There's something about the receiving. It's something that you're not looking, it's a reflection, but you're not truly looking at it within yourself. You're not seeing or appreciating something about yourself. Mm -hmm. So you're negative. It has a grasp on you. It has a hold of you. Some yes. aspect of you. You see? It's this not accepting something about the self. Yes. It's why we have these attachments that feel so negative at times. It's something in the self that we're not appreciating. So we're we withholding something. Could we say that a new perception could be could be that it's chaotic energy that allows for the expansion of benevolent growth? It's just about how you perceive it as energy, how you perceive the energy from potentiated energy to kinetic energy. Chaotic energy is more kinetic energy, energy in motion. Everything is in constant state of change, as we know. So if you look at this from a purely energetic standpoint, negativity is based on a conditioning of polarity. Negativity is truly a, just a perception of a certain type of energy that's chaotic in its nature, that it causes growth instead of saturation and um, plateauing of oh, I think you hit it. It's the unwillingness to change. Yes, the comfortability, the comfort zone, that getting out of the box, stepping, taking the, the, the courage to, to go forward. In, in spite of fear, there's something that yet holds us back. What is that truly? It's the lack comfort. of imagination. But the, there's a comfort. There's a there's, yeah, a, there's a comfort and comfortable comfort in how you perceive things as they are, and not wanting anything in that perception to change. Resistance. Why? And change is inevitable. Change. Exactly. Change is inevitable, and resistance to change will always have you clashing. You can't stop an immovable force. Yes. Right, yes. Back and forth. Back and forth. But yet, it would slightly 
when you choose, there's this constant push and pull yet, but when you're truly in the moment, you're starting to push a little bit forward, and you're starting to, your choices are becoming more easier. You don't feel like that, that mm, the struggle as much. You don't feel right. the pull as much. Because you're still more in that excitement and the joy when you're making your choices freely and not out of base of joy, not out of fear. Yes. The fear comes, the attachments of the past, because yet mm, mm, nothing ever changes. Mm, why should I even try? Mm, it's always been this way. Mm, but yet, when you truly are making an effort, and, and, and in spite of fear, there's always that that small little mm, thing on your shoulder saying, ah, you're not good enough. You don't deserve it. But know that you are deserving. Know that you exist. You're here for purpose that you have complete command of who you are in that moment, always. Yes. When you're willing to change, you understand that you don't have to take something from another because everything is given to you yes. by your own free will. Yes. yes. Everything is given freely. But when you're unwilling to change, you have you feel the need to take without yeah. giving. Yes. Expectations. And that's where this it becomes a problem. Because if you take and take and take, you become a drain on someone else's energy. And you feel that drain. And you can feel lives. that drain and they can feel the drain. Yes. Really. But if you're willing to change, if you're willing to accept change and accept growth within yourself, truly, there can be a middle ground in whatever the situation is. But when you resist change, there can be no middle ground. Yes, when you're not following that excitement or that joy and you're starting to see it pass you by, you feel the nudges, you feel the pulls more, don't you? You're not centered. You're you're starting to feel the resistance. You're starting to feel it because why? Why is that? The difference between skepticism and cynicism is skepticism allows the willingness to be open to change. Yes. And the other does not. Right. Sabrina. Yes? Yes. You ask a question, so why the need to ascend? If there is a negative, if there is negative in other dimensions. Yes. Um, I mean, there is negative and positive in other dimensions, um, but since I awakened, uh, the need for ascension. I mean, this is this is something that I I like to know more. Uh, you know, more information, more uh, more. Um, participation in uh, spirit world and spirituality and uh, so I've taken this uh, step toward ascension. Why, how do you answer that? You you already know there is negative and um, you know positive beings in, in, any, in any dimension so how would you answer this question that why why would you wanna it only affects you in a negative way if you allow. You are in command. Through beliefs, through your structures, it's you. How you react to it can even play a bigger effect. How you react to it. Do you react with a negativeness or a positiveness? May I answer Mary's question? Well, uh, Sabrina's question, actually. Go ahead, Sarah. 
the reason why we ascend is to attain more awareness of ourselves, to attain more knowledge, to feel more love within ourselves. to gain intuition, to gain a wider perspective of things. This is what we chose. We wished for it because we did not understand the duality so much. We continued to look for something else and we couldn't find it until we went within ourselves to find the information to intuitive, intuitively know certain things about ourselves and the others around us. Non-ascension gave us no answers. The awareness that we were given from birth truly kept us limited. It kept us at a certain level. We did not want that anymore because we understood that was not for us. We wanted something more. And more comes with change, not stagnation. Awareness comes with change, not stagnation. Love comes with change and not stagnation. Freedom comes with change. So you see, we chose ascension. because the idea of duality no longer made us happy. Okay, but duality continues. Of course it does. But we chose this role to help ascend humanity to be the light, show, the light bearers and way showers. We chose this role. Ascension is awareness. Yes. Spread more awareness. And the key awareness with this is perception of negativity as we just looked at and it's rooted in an inability to accept change. And even at a higher dimensional level, these dimensional beings, even though they may be very benevolent, there's certain things such as, you know, Atlantis Lemuria complex a very high consciousness civilization can still have a hard time wanting to have ability to change over topics such as should we infringe upon another uh, species free will to help them grow. Maybe it could have good intent. You know, the intent can be good, but still um, that energy, that perception of energy, of an inability to change in some way, a stagnation in some way, in whatever expression, um, that can come at different dimensional levels. And on a very low dimensional level, we see it in a very rudimentary, primitive, violent way. But on a very high dimensional level, you've already seen it expressed in a very intellectually, uh, extremely well thought out uh, consciousness. But it can still come out a certain energy that is a reflection of that same kind of energy that we call negativity. Um, but there's still there's still a lesson there for even these extremely high level dense dimensional entities. And I think the higher dimensionally you get up, the less and less and less and less you see that type of energy, most likely. But that's because there's been so much reflection gain for there to be that much awareness to say, okay. So that's why those tiny little bits of nuggets of information and new awareness that those very high dimensional entities get are so precious because it's something new that, it, you know, they have a very vast pool. It's like, wow, that's beautiful, a new expression. And entities like us on Earth are providing so many new catalysts to be learned and seen from just for these entities to say, wow, through them going through that really darkest night of the hour, I can see some new little ways of through emotionally complex uh, entities showing me um, some new facets of the infinity, you know, through their experience, which 
is what it's all about. Experience to give awareness. If we may intercede with that, what you speak of is brilliant. Can you imagine in the school systems, the educational, if a child was taught at a very early age how love he or she is? In the school systems, they would have classes on teaching how brilliant you are, how loved you are, what, lo what love is, how it moves through each other, the uh, self-appreciation of oneself. Can you imagine how it changed society, being taught this at an early age? It would be an entirely new society. Oh yes. oh, yes. Starting so young, knowing, having the confidence to say, there's no need to take from another. There's no need to push against another. Because I am loved. I exist. Surely being that taught in schools would really bring a greater awareness. Remember, dear one, is that we already teach that. We, has, we have always taught love in the school, because love is everything. And everything is love. What is not taught in the schools is the idea have, of change. Yeah, we had the separation of church and state, which, which really meant separation of spirit from self. No, completely, and I wasn't even like you know extremely Catholic or any of these Christian things, but I I realized they were they were saying deeper that it was being cut off in a sense, you know. It is you know if you want to meditate, if you want to do whatever, you know, who cares what your religion is? There still should be this I think importance for say education of the soul is still important with education of a linear left brain log you know empirical minded person. You know, I can be very objective and I see the importance, but unless you have synthesis between the left brain and the right brain. You're not going to have full utilization of your consciousness. Yes. As a human. You and know. your heart. And your heart. Yeah. Heart. I mean. The feeling. We're so taught yeah. in society, do, 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 but not so much. It's more thinking, but not feeling. Yes. Hi, everybody. Hello, Safira. Hello, Safira. What I, I mean. Like so I would I'm... like to. Oh, sorry, guys. Sorry, Gabriel. <laughs> Hi, Gabriel. <laughs> I said something, and some some people asked about that. Hello, and I thought I thought you only said hi. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, no she, I did. I was, was to give her opinion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> First, I'd like to say, Gordon, it's nice to see you after so long. Hi. <laughs> and uh, hi, Brian. I see you're eight years old, but. Hello. So uh, about the uh, another aspect adding to ascension because everybody pretty much said pretty much everything um, is that we were born co-creators and with a very high well with the ability to co-create but um, things happened and somehow we became blind to that inner part of ourselves so our desire to ascend is to simply take our place who we really are, and, and that's pretty much what everybody said, so I don't really need to say more than that, but um, yeah, and I think uh, Arusha said the other day in, um, what's that, the channeling workshop, that a reason to channel, and channeling is connected to ascension, well channeling, the reason channeling helps with ascension is that it connects us to a, a universe within and without, like we understand our oneness with everything, with ourselves, with everybody around us, with other universal beings, so understanding our oneness also helps with our ascension, because we realize we're more than who we thought we were, but that it's also a remembrance of who we always knew we were, <laughs> so it's a kind of a double-edged thing. May I expand so on not that? Double -edged. That is brilliant. It's a combined May I, thing. May I expand on that? Yes, I'm done. Thank you. The true thing is expanding on the idea of getting to a language, breaking down the barriers of language in a way where all can resonate and feel the sensations of, uh, like a telep uh, telepathy, they call it. Feeling that what others, your intention is. Um, will really 
help resolve a lot of the uh, wars and the and a lot of the imbalance that you see around the planet. It's more moving into a state of command, but yet trying to when you when one speaks of mm, about light and love and about ascension, it's really those who might not have heard this before or this way of teaching or perceiving really trying to find the balance to use verbiage in a way that can help them understand that unity um, coming down to their level sometimes because sometimes we talk way 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 up here and it's really bringing it down in a way that really unites each other instead of dividing because usually the barriers of language this is why a lot of the wars take place because one or the unwillingness of one to truly listen to the other it's because these these it's this too much clashing there's a there's a barrier of languages but using in a way when we speak in a way that people can truly grasp and understand it is coming down to their level appreciating them seeing the God within them and even though we many will talk about in this ascension is getting down to their level and sometimes it's our getting out of our ego, and really coming down to really say, I, I hear what you're saying. It's connecting with them at a, at a, in a spirit. And it's connecting with them on a level that they can appreciate. You both can appreciate each other. It's not about separation as much as really about a balance, a unity. To say, ah, I see you. I hear you now. I didn't get it before. The things that what you said before might have went over my head. But now I start to hear you. I want to understand. I truly want to understand. But something happened. A word that you used. You weren't at my level. I couldn't understand you. It went over my head. But now, now that you're coming to back down to my level, I can truly understand you. It's being creative. It's being playing with words. It's really listening to where they're seeing, feeling where the other person is at and their ascension. And coming down, coming down to a level where they can truly appreciate what you have to offer. They might not take everything that you have to offer, but at least you're connecting in a way that vibrates with them, that gets to the point. You see, very well said, Sophia. We love you. Thank you. Much love to you as well. Uh, I would like to add to something that Sarah said, which is very poignant to the subject of ascension and that is being in static, a static position in any way kind of can hinder ascension because ascension is often connected to coming out of our comfort zones and being at the center of um, just people who do not understand what we are doing or going through or things like that. Um, it reminds me of when I was young and I was in a uh, um, handmade, well, we made our own swimming pool in the backyard. And me and my sisters, we decided to walk in one direction for quite a while. We created a whirlpool. And then we decided to turn the other direction and go against this energy. And it was so hard to move in the other direction. And this is also partly what ascension is as well, is coming out of our comfort zones, coming out of my comfort zone, I should speak for myself. And um, yeah, and just being willing and willing to do that in order to grow. So what Sarah said about uh, freedom, meaning non-static or, or all the things we want, we need to come out of a, I need to, sorry, I need to come out of a position where I decide to come out of a static mind, a static heart, static attitude, static even movement with my physical body and just move and get out there and do the things that involve me with people and with serving. And then, like Brian, you just, or whoever you are sharing with, I'm sorry, I came in late, I wasn't attuned to it completely, but, um, and then to not be stand above anyone, but to speak in their language, and that's also a hard thing to do. But it's an amazing communication. Yes, you. you summed it up perfectly. <clears throat> vulnerability. A lot of people are afraid to be vulnerable because of the past, how they've been hurt. They're afraid to open this, their heart. 
afraid to get hurt again in some way, shape, Mm -hmm. or form. It's really, truly, the power is in your vulnerability in the moment because you're taking command. You see? And you're, you're shedding, you're allowing yourself to feel, to, to be, and even in spite of what others come back at you. But if you're radiating love, it's usually going to attract it. You're going to attract all that love that you push out, you project out. It's going to mm-hmm. come back so strongly, so profoundly. And this is what brings more of the synchronicity in a positive way. Yes, mm-hmm. it can be a little negative, but yet it's more of a positive, you see? Is what Sa- we truly all want. Safira, Safira the way yes. I see, see ascending is that we are always ascending. It's creepy. Yes. In, in the way you're always ascending to some place. If you choose to ascend and believe that you're not ascending, you're ascending in the way of not, of not, of not ascending, but you actually are ascending. Everyone <laughs> are ascending. What you cannot do is not to ascend. You always ascend to something. And what well, you, you want to ascend to is your choice. Well, there's descension and ascension. So I think every moment I can choose whether I am, if I'm speaking with somebody, I can choose whether to descend and get reactive and upset and whatever and say angry words. Or I can choose to be accepting and just smile and embrace who they but are. But then you are ascending to that. If you descend, you're actually ascending to the descent. You basically yeah, never really yeah. descend. It's, it's, you, it's, it's always exploration of consciousness. Mm-hmm. You always know that you you always get back to the source in the end, all the knowledge. Mm-hmm. But when you're down here, you don't know that you're going to down to the all the knowledge. It's basically part of your ascension to explore all of these, negativity, positivity, all angles you can choose to connect to. It's up to you, dear Safira. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And you can never really not ascend. So if, but if you choose not to ascend, that's for me part of ascension as well, because you ascend into that direction. So thank you so much, Safira, for whatever you are being who you truly are and showing the world how to exist in the way you exist. It's a very beautiful thing you chose to co-create. From my perspective, I think uh, what you're saying is there's always growth. Growth is always inevitable, just as, just as the change is inevitable. You're a singularity of thought moving through consciousness. So that growth even though it may be perceived as negativity at that time, it's still awareness, meaning there's still awareness to be gained to say, oh, wait, I can learn from that thing in, in what we call the past to say I can change my current now based on that past awareness, that past experience of now to so say now I can choose a new type of choice. Getting back to it, it's always about in the now. It's always about present. It's always about choice. But as far as awareness, there's always growth because there's always awareness to be gained. There's always new consciousness and new experience. Just by you incarnating, just by you being you know, conscious and is, as we always get back to, you will, just by that simply alone, yeah, there will be growth um, inevitably because you're going to have awareness and new consciousness gained, whether it's from a perspective of seeing this experience or this experience uh, and whether whatever plethora of emotion that plays to, there is a growth of awareness. Um, which is beautiful because we know we're truly never going backwards. It's just our perception would be perceiving it as back to that time, but then you can say, because there's been times where, look at every great, in, in, in very grounded way, every great entrepreneur says, my greatest achievements or my greatest breakthroughs are when I learned from my failures. When I learned from those times when I was perceiving it and that now is this is extreme failure, this negativity, and how I perceive this by firing this person or asking for too much money. But then in that later point, when they truly have that extremely beneficial growth um, or monumental breakthrough, say, into a company that takes off or whatever, they weren't able to achieve that without the awareness and the growth from that previous experience. So it's merely the perception at the time, but it is truly always growth because you are just peace. You are all that is already. Um, so it's exciting to know that you're only going to be moving forward truly. Um, 
experiencing by experiencing. That's what it's all about is experiencing. Just beautiful to the both of you. Beautiful perspective. Um, <coughs> hello, Caitlin. Oh, she left. Yeah, she'll be back. <laughs> <laughs> They'll both be back. Sean, too. <laughs> okay, I was going to fill them in, but... <laughs> we should be no, no one is really Much here. We are all traveling. Much love to all of you. We shall leave you. Thank, Thank you. you so Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We, Thank you. We, we've hoped this will really enlighten and uplift others to see within themselves the things that they want to move forward with. And maybe we, we have. Yes. I'm sorry. I just, I just was trying for clarity. May we have your, um, what you would like us to have you known as? Have we established that? Yet? At this time, that's not important. Okay. At this, at this time, at this time, at this time. But it's really about soul essence speaking through you with the joint collective of all that you are here in the moment. Thank you, my friends, and much Thank love. You. Thank, thank you. Thank you. you for interacting with us, and thank you for your participation. Thank you. Namaste. 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 Wow, Brian. Just wow. Welcome back, Brian. Welcome back, yes. Who was that so, thing? I have to applaud oh, everybody today. Let me just put it this way. Yeah. Uh, I'm staying quiet because I think it was beautiful what was happening here. And I feel important that everybody was flowing and everybody was channeling, even if it was their high, you know, if, I think a lot of people were channeling their higher selves. Um, but wow, Gabriel, proud mama you made me. Yes, yeah, same here, Gabe. I, that, all of you. Oh, my God. It's just like, it's like being Sarah, there. Sarah, Sarah also. Very, very, very nice. Thank you. Mary, much wisdom. Gordon, of course, always. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant, Gordon. Oh, my God. Brilliant, oh, my brilliant. Oh, brilliant. wow. So, and of course, Safira. Yes, yes. Safira. <laughs> and and uh, my shout out goes to Sabrina for allowing and putting and help co creating this. This is all of you guys. Just think of this. The mastery of all everything that was spoken here. I mean, it's just and it's live. It's recorded where people can see this and enjoy it. Depth. Yes. These these are questions that everyone asks on a daily question on a daily basis. Most you know their lives about just their struggles of life and and how to overcome them. Right. The moment. It's brilliant. Yeah, and, yes. I think, and I think it's important not to be afraid to go to both sides. Yeah. Yes. You know, I, I think people think that because you're going you're you know, sending or going more neutral or you know, however you call it, that talking about the negative it's not a good thing. I think we cannot really understand the light and that's why we are in a duality unless you accept both sides, know that you contain both sides and that you're capable of feeling them both and not to feel guilty because you feel anger or you feel sadness or any of those things because we contain all of them we came here to and we had the awareness that we were going to have all of them so that's all part of the experience yes we came here to experience all of this we came here for the experience to assemble self Yes, to become us ended masters. <laughs> and Prana is here with us in spirit. <laughs> <laughs>
Or or become the ascended masters. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. So, Sabrina, yeah, if you want to do closing or blessing, yes. that would, you guys want to do some blessings? Yes! We can let it go five, ten minutes. Yeah. Just let it, it go, cool. everybody. <laughs> okay, so I, I will go first this time. Tora kano kukua anakuara katunu asakatu. Erio sana kia la tukus kutuara tata tunuaka. Tentio la saku ataka nuakati. Kerio sana kukua. Noskuru akatari asakatu olono. Tentio ronu akati shi no kuanaka. Kanta kalio sorua. Naskario tolo nuakata. Senti ala anakua takitio suku anaka a sonua te ki yo no aki yo kuata tono soa hasanua tentio saniao oruana te sonua ka ta suana ka tenio rua ta suana ka alano kotu su ruana ki Esarionua, atu osarionua, hasu onuara atuana sukua, ata. Gordon, Sarah, Mary, any of you? Oh, yeah, I have also a message in English. Go forth as ascended masters of love, first to yourself, to all of your inner children, to your past lives, bring them all forth into the light and rejoice, and then go forth among those around you, in your families, in your communities, and be masters of acceptance, and approachability, and love, and service. Namaste. 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 <laughs> 
Shataisia Kuanika Sha Kisana Kwaya Shata Koshu Namaste. Namaste. Thank you. Namaste. Thank you. どうしてくんだなら。見せ方を、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、こう、
Pus, Pum, Potator, Let me go last. Go ahead, unless Gabriel has something to say. Oh, yes, yes, Gabriel. Yeah. <laughs> Kushu Watana, Ia Kataria, A Shokoto no Noata, Ia Katsanu Kushokoto, Niana Kana Shokoto, Ia Niakata, Ia Kahoanana, Ia Shokototoa, Ia Nuku, Ia Shakana, Ia Totoa, Ia Koshoko Ushuata, Ushua, Nia Kotoa. いやならいや、おこどそとのは、いやしょとのは、やかしゃな、いやしょく、しゃな、いや、うのあら、うしょとは、いやかなにしゃな、おしくどは、なにやろこのぬわた、いやしょことのぬわ、いはな。Thank you. Namaste. I bring you the message that you all, all, all already knows that's been awakened within you. So go out. You already know what you are here. Beautiful beings you all are. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, that's what I got. And that's a perfect way to close. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank um, you, Gabriel. Wait Thank one you. moment. Okay. I'd like to read Sophia's translation of my language. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh. Okay. Um. She says she felt part, that part of the. Okay, Tafira, you do it. <laughs> oh, no, 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 Tafira, you. No, 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 Sarah, you do it. Good. Go for it. Come on, Tafira, you've never been shy. Yeah, Tafira, you do it because it's coming from you. I give all rights. No, to you. no, it's not about Jeez. that. It's, it's just I felt part of the translation was about. Everybody can read it actually. Um, it was about wisdom and that if we meditate for a moment and tap into the libraries of wisdom from those once lived, past, and not incarnated but are high masters, that this wisdom is available to tap into and incorporate. We need only go into ourselves for this if we wish, though so going outside for this connects us to places and people we cannot guess beforehand. I, I just felt that was part of what she was saying, Nagar was that it's all right here and we can tap into it at any time. That's kind of what I said to someone <laughs> and I never read that. Thank you. Yes, there you go, there you go. <laughs> that was a confirmation. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So I wouldn't be surprised if everybody said the same thing in a different way. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Safira. Thank you. Safira, did you did you say something? Did you say a blessing? I did and um okay. it was from Quinyan and, and she was oh, um, Quinyan? 
<laughs> oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I never get her name right. Yeah, it was from Quan Yin, and I was trying to. Oh, maybe it was like the language wasn't hers, but I think that message at the end in English was from her. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I think so. To all the participants, thank you so much. It, this made it without you, it wouldn't be this. So, you guys, that's why I love about interaction. Each of you are mastering your own right, and you just share this wisdom that this pours out of you. You are so loved. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Bye bye. Much. Bye bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, universe. Bye, bye. bye human.